together and let's open up in a word of prayer. I mean, no, oh God's good. Father, we thank you for your goodness and kindness to us this morning. Father, we celebrate the moms of the house. We celebrate the moms in our lives. We celebrate that, God, you ordained motherhood. And we thank you, Father, for the family. We thank you, God, that you've given us moms. And today we're going to celebrate moms. We're going to rejoice that, God, you were good in sending us the moms that you did. We honor you today. We welcome you today, Holy Spirit. We pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May we give you all the praise and all the glory in this house. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless you today. God bless. Thanks to have you here. Let's enter in. Let's go for it. Let's believe God for good things in the house. Amen? Amen. How many know God's good? All the time. Amen? All right. God bless you. Jesus in all things, I've seen a glimpse of your heart, a billion years, still I'll be singing, how can I praise you enough, how can I praise you enough, you are the Lord, you are the Lord Almighty. I'll shine in all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Oh, nothing else compares. So creation calls all to the Savior. We all laugh for your praise in earth and sky. No one is higher, a God of wonders you reign, a God of wonders you reign, you are the Lord Almighty, I'll shine in all the stars in glory, your love is like the wildest ocean, oh, oh nothing else can I'll shine in all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Oh, nothing else compares. Not to us.
You're seated on the throne of mercy. You're shining by for all, for all to see. Magnificent with grace unending, you rescue us with love that never fails. Oh, oh God, I will praise you, who is like the Lord, strong in battle, who is like the Lord, mighty to save, who is like the Lord, King forever. Jesus reigns, Jesus reigns. And I know that you are always with me. Your presence goes before and goes behind. And oh, oh God, I will praise you. Who is like the Lord, strong in battle? Who is like the Lord, mighty to save? Who is like the Lord, King forever? Jesus reigns, Jesus reigns. Oh, you reign.
Has he been good to me? Yes, he has. And given all things to me. Yes, he has. In the moments when you've doubted me, he's been there to me. Is he our champion? Yes, he is. And doing what no one can. Yes, he is. Is he Alpha and Omega? Yes, he is. For all of my days, I will sing out your praise. You have been so good, been so good. Oh, I'm still amazed by your mercy and grace. You have been so good, you've been so I won't forget all your faithfulness. I won't forget all your promises to me. Your word remains and you never change. You are always good. I won't forget. I won't forget all your faithfulness I won't forget your word remains and you never change you are always good for all of my days I will sing out your praise you have been so good, been so good. Oh, I'm still amazed by your mercy and grace. You have been so good, been so good. For all of my days, I will sing out your praise. You have been so been so good. Oh, I'm still amazed by your mercy and grace. You have been so good, been so good to me.
So Casting out fear, you are the 
encouragement that is. I'm so encouraged to know that he will never fail you. I will fail you. You will fail me. We will fail one another, but you'll, he'll never fail. In, my, in the simplicity of my thinking, I'm like, why would no one ever want to serve a God who would never leave them nor forsake them? Why? Why? And all I can tell you is I know we are in a battle the likes of which most people don't even understand. I'm convinced the church is still sleeping. I'm convinced the church is still asleep, doesn't recognize the intensity of the warfare we're in. And I'm like you. I don't want to acknowledge it. I don't really want to understand and really think about the fact that I've got to fight in war for my family. I've got to fight in war for this church. I've got to fight in war for my supply in, in, in life. There's, there's, there's just a lot going on right now in the world. And if we think for a moment it's just going to go away, it's not. So we have some choices to make as the body of Christ. Either we can fight and war for the promises that God's given to us, which is provision, which is hope, which is joy unspeakable, which is the things that God, that we fight for and work for, they're ours to take. But it's not just, it's not, it's not just going to be so uh, simple as to think, I, I'm just going to think it today, it's going to happen. 
that you, you, you've got to understand there's a, there's a battle taking place in a realm that you cannot see. That's why when I was praying for today, I was praying, God, wreck us. And now you're probably thinking, why would my pastor pray to wreck us? Well, get used to it because I want him to wreck your life. I want you to be in the place where he wrecks the way you thought before because it didn't line up necessarily with what God is speaking to us about. He wants to make you, I should say it this way, he wants to align you with his perfection. That's even a better word. He wants to line you up with his will. He wants to line us up with his plan. He wants to line us up with the promises that he's given to us in his scripture. Why? So he can bring us together in mass, if you will, and begin to take what's been promised to us and see it fulfilled. You've got family members that are going to hell right now. Oh, I know I should probably calm that down. You've got family members that may not make it. No, guys, you, we, we've got family members that if they took their last breath today, they would not spend eternity in heaven. Does that move anyone? You've got neighbors going to hell. Should we just call it what it is today? I'm not watering down the church any longer. I'm not playing that with anyone. Neither should you. You are the ecclesia. We cannot afford to not tell people the truth. Listen to this. Of course, they're left. There it is. In, in, in Matthew chapter 11, verse, verse 11, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, among those born of women, there has been not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. You might not know who John the Baptist is in the scripture. Yet, the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater in privilege than he, John the Baptist. The least of us in the kingdom of God is, is greater than John the Baptist. See, who cares? From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault. And violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. What that speaks to me today for us is that we are a people that even in terms of being least, less than a John the Baptist are greater than a John the Baptist in the kingdom, which means the privilege of praying your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is our joy and our satisfaction, our privilege. We pray all the resource of heaven to come to earth right now. And you, my friend, every one of you, no matter where you think you are in your journey with God, you have the ability, the authority to call heaven down and pray his kingdom come and his will be done because you are greater than even the, that, that what John the Baptist was. You get this? It's time we step into the... Guys, I'm hungry. I'm desperate in a way to see us fulfill the promise of God. Are you desperate at all? I'm going to ask you a simple question. On Monday, do you go right back to the way you were living prior to what happened on Sunday? See, I'm looking, I'm looking for the day when we are all so hungry that we live Monday through Saturday greater than we do on Sunday. That we are believing for signs and wonders, not just on Sunday when it's easy, but Monday through Saturday, we're praying for the sick on, in the marketplace, in the streets. We're praying for our family. We're, we're believing God for greater things for them. Can you? Are you hungry? Are you desperate? You desire the greater things. The Bible says that we're in a battle. The kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault, and violent men will take it by force. What does that mean? It's the people of prayer that are going to take the promises of God. We're going to battle in the spirit realm, which means you've got to do more than Sunday. We have to fight for everything that's been promised. I keep reading about food shortages that may be coming. What will we do as a church if that happens? Are we putting on a shelf like, man, I don't want to even think about that. And all of a sudden it hits us. And now we're like, ah, what are we going to do? 
I'll tell you what we do. We ask for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, and he will make a way where there does not seem to be a way. But we have to be hungry for those things. I'm going to keep provoking this. I'm going to keep going after this. We will not be known ever as a people that are not hungry. We will be known as a people that are desperate for the more of God. Come on, stand to your feet, please. warfare right now is your, is your worship. You know someone's sick in body, dying of something, cancer in their body? War right now for them in the spirit. If you're sick in body today, say no more. I reject it. In Jesus' name, I'm made whole. Salvation. Salvation for your family now in Jesus' name. Mental health, we speak to you right now. In Jesus' name, mental health. You must line up with the promise of God. And you must think the way that Jesus created you to think, feel, and love. I am desperate. More. There's a hope and a thirst. I am desperate in mercy. In Jesus' name. On our way. In Jesus' name. Not anymore. God, we need your Bible. Spirit, I pray right now. Every single thing that you died for, every single thing that was nailed to the cross, I pray, God, that we, your children, would recognize the power of an empty tomb and recognize the fact that you paid the price of death in the grave, that you rose again, you came out of a tomb, you're alive and well, and because you are alive today, those promises that we read about in your scripture are ours to appropriate. They're ours to contend for. They're ours to believe for. And God, may we as a people never relent on the fact that greater are you that's within us, that we have a spirit inside of us, a Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth. 
We have a Holy Spirit that will lift us up when we need to be lifted up. We have a Holy Spirit that will give us wisdom when we need wisdom. We have a God that will lead his church triumphantly. And may we never look left or right. May we never give up on the hope that we have in you, Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would send your rain down upon us. I'm asking for the latter rain. I'm asking, God, for a deluge of your presence. I'm asking you, God, in the last days for us to encounter you like the days in the early 1900s, God, when Azusa Street blew up in Los Angeles and signs and wonders followed every ethnic group and every people group. And out of that came a missionary endeavor, the likes of which we've never seen before. God, we need another move. And may it not be like what it used to look like, but God, may we find it manifest in the lives of families. I pray, God, there would be a move in family. I pray, God, there would be such a restoration of marriages, of children. I pray, God, that those that are addicted to drugs would come to you, God, repent of their wicked ways, and ask mom and dad for forgiveness. Come back into the family, God. I pray for Lord Jesus in this day when Roe v. Wade is at the forefront once again in the courts and the land. I pray, God, your will be done right now in Jesus' name. We pray, God, there will be an overturn. We are pro-life. We believe in life, God, but not just in the womb. We believe it all the way through the, to our last breath, God. We believe in the totality of life. Jesus, Jesus, hear our cry this morning. The family unit must be restored. It's my conviction, even as I've listened to others, and I'm believing it more and more, the future of a church like this one and future healthy churches that are doing God's kingdom work, it's going to be found in the family. It's going to be found in moms and dads working together and single moms and, and, and single dads coming into relationship with the body of Christ. It's to the res res restoration of families. It's, it's going to be found, God, in adoption. It's going to be found in fostering. It's going to be found in demonstrating what you demonstrated in your scripture. Jesus, in your awesome name, we pray this morning these things. So be it. And everyone said amen. 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 If you want to, just take a moment and go say hi to someone. High five them. Welcome them. Happy Mother's Day. Sorry, man. She was it's all right. Good morning. How you doing?
All right. Okay, well, listen, before we uh, show you some announcements of what God's doing, um, just a couple things. Moms, do me a favor before you leave today. Go over to our photo booth. We've got a couple of signs there. Hold up the sign, take a selfie, and make sure you take that selfie and put it on our Facebook page. We want to celebrate all of our moms, and if you don't, we will track you down uh, with our camera and get a picture <laughs> of you and blow it up life-size in the, in, somewhere in the building just so... <laughs> You're targeted darts. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, we bless you today. Thanks for being here. Um, we are honored that you come today. I know there's a lot of people sick, and I know some mothers are with their moms other places, which we know happens at Mother's Day. So thanks for being here today. We love you. And uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do offering now. Or offering. We're going to do our offering yep. decree. So stand up. Did anyone get a new job this week? What What'd you get? Testimony, what's your testimony? <laughs> Amen. Okay, so those who are watching online, I noticed last week you can't hear it when people just shout out their testimonies in the room. So those of you who are watching online, Frida received two checks in the mail. One was a refund from the hospital and the other one was from a settlement. So thank you, Lord. Amen. So we're going to make our decree right now. And if there's something that you're needing in your life, I want to make sure that you're shouting it out and you're making that decree with me, feeling it, okay? Here we go. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs that we would have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. And for those of you who don't regularly attend here, I just want to say um, if you're confused by us doing the decree and it's saying as we take the offering today, we are doing our, our giving by uh, online. We'll have information in our announcements with that. We have, um, you can drop a check or cash in the boxes in the back, the two blue boxes. They have notes over them. And then we also can give on our website. So those are the three ways. And um, let's see, how about we have all the mothers stand up right now? Moms, can you stand up? Stay standing. And we have some really cute kids over here that are going to bring you a little gift. I feel like we should sing Happy Mother's Day to you or something to us. Happy Mother's Day to us. Happy Mother's Day to us. Do I get one? Do I get one? Can I get one? Thank you. What a cute bag. Someone must really love you that put those gift bags together. Someone thinks you're special. <laughs> Yay, it's so quiet. Thank you. You know, and if you um, have fostered, if you've taken care of other people's children and been like an extra mom, I don't mind you standing up and receiving a gift. I've got plenty to bless you with. So we'll just give the announcements verbally today. Have a seat once you get your little gift. Okay, so our verbal announcements are this. Let's see. The third Saturday of the month, the men meet for their monthly breakfast. The fourth Sunday of the month at 5.30 p.m., the women have their Bible study. 
We have our Wednesday night classes that start at 6.30 in the evening. Pastor Barry and I have been teaching those. And um, is that good? Children's ministry is over here. Our youth ministry is led by Anita and Alex Ramirez. And um, anything else, Maggie? Oh, yes. Okay. And we have a KWA meeting, Kingdom Writers Association meeting, this Saturday morning. They meet at 8.30 for prayer, and the actual meeting starts at 9. Okay, hi. Happy Mother's Day to all you. Come on. Okay. So how many know that we have, uh, Pastor Tammy, you can stay up here. We have a mother of the house, right? You know, and uh, I call it little souls of churches or um, people. They call it uh, first lady. So we have our first lady of the house. So we want to... The church wants to give her some flowers as being the mother of the house of Light Spring. And she also has a card. So um, we just wanted to bless you this morning as our house mother. I appreciate that. That was su a surprise to me. What a blessing. Okay, I need to grab my computer. And if you could start my first slide up there. Grab all of my stuff. See, this is what moms do. We have to have everything prepared for just in case. At least moms like me. I am the mom that always, to this day, brings wipe-ups with me just in case there's an accident. If I have my grandkids with me, I might even have extra clothes for them just in case. Oh, I just moved these. Just in case. One time when I was younger, and my, my two oldest kids were much younger, I was sitting with my friend at lunch and with a coworker. My friend used to be my husband's assistant, and so we're both Christians. We're both kind of young moms, and the person we were sitting with said, Tammy, I bet you're the mom that has a diaper bag filled with everything, like extra clothes, extra anything, just in case you need it. And she looked at my friend and she goes, but I bet you're like me and you put your kids in, uh, to bed at night in the clothes they're going to wear to preschool tomorrow and you have to borrow a diaper from someone else. My friend was offended, but I was like, yes, I am that person. And I was proud of it. Yes, I am that woman that's prepared most of the time. Okay, so today I was thinking about what shall I share at Mother's Day that would be different. Well, there's probably nothing, no new message for mothers, right? So I thought, I'm going to talk about the messiness of motherhood. Okay, so go to the next slide. I'm going to get through a few of these first. Okay, so this top picture, that's me and my dad and my mom. My husband's peeking through the back and my daughter's in the back. But that's my mom. I guess I should point this way. And then this bottom picture, this one's going to be used probably every year for me. I bought my kids these shirts for Mother's Day during the pandemic, and they all say I'm mom's favorite because I got tired of them going, Blake's your favorite, Mackenzie's a favorite. So I said, you're all my favorites. I've told you that for years. You are all my favorites. So I said, please send me a picture of you wearing the T-shirt I bought you. And so now I will be showing it every year. You'll see this again next year. And uh, I just love my kids to pieces, and there's something amazing about every single one of them. So it really is hard to have a favorite, and I know that a lot of moms, we do tend to nurture our sons a little bit, but I can tell you my husband spoils his daughters too. So next slide. This is my whole happy family right here, minus two dogs. Um, my son Blake, my son-in-law Chasen, my daughter Mackenzie, my daughter in love Olivia, Pastor Barry and me and our doggy Smokey. And then the short one in the front row is my daughter Lacey, my oldest. And then her oldest, Grayson, her youngest, Zayden, and then her only little girl, Bexley. That is our happy little family. Next slide. My daughter just graduated. Yay. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you, I know you have that same kind of feeling of pride. Your kids have graduated from college as well. She's our baby, and she's the first one to, to graduate from a four-year college. Our oldest um, went to a trade. She is a cosmetologist. Our son 
um, is doing music at different churches. So we're very proud of each one of them for the accomplishments that they've done. But we're just extra proud right now of our daughter Mackenzie. She graduated on Thursday morning from Vanguard University. And um, we'll see what the Lord has for her next. Next slide. I thought this was really cool. While I was looking up things on the internet, I found out September 4th is National Lazy Moms Day. Is that the greatest thing? That means on September 4th, we don't have to do anything. We get to stay in bed, in in our pajamas, whatever we feel like on that day. Mark it down. And if you want more of those dates, just look up nationaltoday.com and they'll tell you others. There's probably one for dads, too, but it's not Father's Day today. (sighs) Next, please. Next slide. I don't mind if you guys feel your way with my slides up there. Just kind of go. Otherwise, I'll just keep saying next. Okay, so the messiness of motherhood. So I brought these as an example. Maybe some of you remember this. Fishy crap. But fishy crackers aren't just eaten like this. And I don't even like fishy crackers. They are like this, all over the floor. And then you go to vacuum them, and there's more. I promise I'll clean these up later. There's more. And you vacuum them up again, and not only are there fishy crackers, but now there's probably fruit snacks and Cheerios in them. That is what I think of in my early years of being a mother, I felt like I vacuumed all day long and I picked up things all day long. And I would probably give my, ba- my kids baths a couple times a day because I couldn't stand them being stinky or dirty. And it just drove me crazy. So when I think of motherhood, I think of all the messiness. I just do. I think of the times when we were in a restaurant And my son would act up, and we would end up outside, or I would end up outside, or one of us would take him in the restroom and swat his little bum. Those are the things I think of. I remember thinking about the commercials with these beautiful families, and everything was perfect. Well, mine wasn't. Mine was not perfect. Someone always had their hair messy. You can go to my next slide. This was one Easter. can get there. I don't know if you noticed this, but the first picture, I'm frazzled, pushing the hair out of my face. Second picture, Blake does not want his picture taken. He's furious. All he wants is probably his Easter candy. And then the third one, we have finally gotten him, probably by bribery, to just stand there and attempt to smile. (laughs) This is what I think of in the early years. But I thought, that's not what you guys need to hear today. So I'm going to talk about the joy of being a mom. It's the best job ever. It really is. God's given us these amazing people to raise, to raise to be like Jesus, to raise them and go, hey, you can do whatever you want. The world is here for you to just go out and explore. There's some moms, though that try to control their kids, and they don't let them explore. But the joy of parenting is that God has given us that blessing and the opportunity to teach them the way that they need to go. So one of the, there are five significant roles of motherhood or of, of a mother, and I don't feel like I'm good at these. Some of you probably are. Manager of, for the family. You probably manage the schedule, Manage the food in the cabinets. Manage how many shoes each kid gets. All of that. They're the teacher for her children. A lot of times, um, we've co-parented quite a bit. So a lot of times, you are doing homework with your kids. And sometimes you're up till midnight doing the science fair project the night before. Because your kid forgot to tell you that it's due tomorrow. And school starts at 8. So I've been there. Calling people going, you have a creative. I remember calling my sister-in-law because her kids were older. Do you have a creative and easy thing for us to do for a science fair project? Sure enough, she whipped out different ideas. We went to Walmart, picked up the supplies, and I worked on it by myself till midnight. (laughs) I didn't care what grade she she or he got. I was like, we're going to have this turned in. World's best chef, that is not me. Um, 
my oldest daughter hated food except for yogurt and grilled cheese sandwiches. So for years and years and years, that's all she ate, yogurt, grilled cheese sandwiches. And then my son came along, and he, was, he ate a little bit more, but he was still a little finicky. But I remember him saying, I want lasagna. I want lasagna. Remember that? <laughs> we are the household nurse. Now that, I feel like, is true. I'm not a nurse. I don't like the sight of blood. I, I do watch different doctor and hospital shows, but I always turn my head when there's anything rom- remotely gory going to happen or, you know, like when they have something stuck in their side or in their head, 